26th of April, the Bishop of Lancaster spoke to us on our online service. And what she said was very personal and powerful and also prophetic. And I wanted to give you this video just to share my thoughts and also what I feel we should do with this particular word that she has given to us. If you haven't watched it, I suggest you go to our YouTube channel and watch it there because it is very powerful and having shared it with a few people, I believe it is a prophetic word to us. So it's from Isaiah chapter 49 and particularly two verses, verse eight and nine. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate borders, to say to the captives, come out, and to those in darkness, be free. What is a prophetic word? A prophetic word is simply a picture of the future that we're called to live in in the present. And when we have a prophetic word, we're called to do a number of things to test whether it is from God and whether we should take note of it. The first thing we should do for a prophetic word is to say, is it scriptural? The second thing is to say, does it exalt Jesus? The third thing is to say, does it resonate with our hearts? We agree with it really deep within ourselves. Fourthly, we need to test it with other people. And five, we need to say, does this particular word build on other things, the general things and specific things that God has been saying to us over the months and years? So let's apply those tests to this word. Well, first of all, is it scriptural? Well, it is because it comes from Isaiah um, and uh, Isaiah is speaking to the people of Israel and he is looking forward to the time where they will be free from exile, where they will come home and their borders will be restored. It is scripture. Secondly, does it exalt Jesus? Well, of course, this prophetic word is before Jesus's time, but Isaiah often looks forward to Jesus, to the final and complete restoration of the covenants that will come through Jesus's death. He speaks of the suffering servant, he speaks of his birth, he speaks of the, and he speaks of his death. It exalts Jesus. Thirdly, does it resonate with our spirit? Well, as I listened to Jill and as others listened to Jill, we really felt, I really felt a deep sense of connection with what she was saying because I applied our circumstances to this passage. There was a real sense of rightness. We will give it to other people to test as well. And finally, does it fit with what other things God may have been saying? Well, over a year ago, Jill came to pray with us uh, on Good Friday and she had a picture of us being a beacon on a hill. She feels that we are in a place of strategic importance for revival in this place. Previous to that, there have been lots of pictures and words about water running from St. James's down from, from the altar down the street and into the town. Again, speaking of revival. And right at the beginning of lockdown, I had a picture of a ploughed field. It was beautifully ploughed. It was very, very rich soil. There was not a weed in sight, not a stone in sight. It was ready for seed to be sown. And the promise that that seed would be sown into such a fertile ground that there would be an amazing harvest. So all these things suggest to me that this prophetic word is just in line with that. So we test it. But what else do we do with it? Well, the next thing we do is to agree with it. We have to intellectually assent, yes, this is right for us, to take it on board, to affirm it in our hearts and our minds. But it's no good just assenting to it as an intellectual exercise. We then have to align ourselves to it. Our strap line is to connect to God, to change with God and to be transformed and transform for God. And this passage is all about connection, changing and transformation. And we are going to align ourselves as a leadership 
in on to, into this passage to connect to change to transform everything we do will be about this simple way of doing things all this all we will do will be about setting captives free about saying to those in darkness come out we will align ourselves as a church on this prophetic word and I ask you too to align yourself individually because this works both individually it works in small groups and it also works corporately so we test we agree we align and then we pray and when we pray we don't pray God will you do this because he has already stated he has done it or is going to do it we are declaring it into being so our prayers are not about asking they are about declaring it as already done prophecies are often dependent upon our prayers and also dependence upon our obedience so what might we pray Lord restore this land we thank you that you are restoring our land we thank you that you have made us a covenant for this people we say to the captives come out and to those in darkness be free we declare this as truth so we test we agree we align we pray and then the last thing we do is we live and we live in its reality as we live in its reality we bring it to being so all that we do will be about setting captives free saying to those in darkness come out we live with commitments commitment to that prophetic word in all that we do we ask for your commitment in your prayers in your service in your giving and when we come in commitment we come with expectation and gratitude God has said this he will do it he is doing it we come and live with it with perseverance because there will be opposition along the way but we come and say we are going to persevere in this call that God has given us and finally we live with purpose so we are constantly finding where the oppressed are and speaking to them we want to go where there is darkness and say to people come out all our ministry wants to be about restoring and transforming the land and we would ask you to take opportunities every moment every day where you see oppression where you see darkness to speak into it to bring light to bring freedom we live with purpose because we live finally with confidence because God has said he will do it we live with confidence as we agree as we align as we pray and as we live confidence in the God who has promised and is bringing it about.